Welcome back to Zero Tolerance for another episode of Learn to Burn with Practical Machinists. Today I want to cover a couple things on fixturing. Um, one is how do you start off with the mindset and it has to go back right in the beginning when you first look at your models that you're trying to make uh, the detail for. For instance, this part right here, um, we decided to put a 3R pallet on the side of this so that we can take it from the five axis machine all the way to the EDM and through the entire process. Right now we're in the middle of it. So I wanted to go over the mindset of it and what are the advantages and disadvantages um, on using fixturing and trying to have a mindset for everything in the shop. We're gonna try to put it on fixtures. I wanna talk about the very first thing when you look at your model and your part is where do you decide or how do you decide to put that mounting fixture on. Um, depending on what it is and what you're holding, if it's a ROA with electrodes or if it's uh, a hard block or something that needs a little bit more of a, a, a secure holding, a work holding system, whether it's 3R, FCS, fast mill, uh, I'm gonna try to cover our thought process and how we decide what we're gonna do and how we got started um, with this particular block of aluminum. We ended up mounting this block with the 3R pallet and we're going to be able to do all of our five axis work along with our EDM burning all in one one fixture, one point of reference, one UCS or one uh, zero XYZ that we're going to reference through all the machines. Um, so we're going to cover those areas. I'm also going to talk about uh, this particular block which is a hardened, hardened block which I, I don't know if I can lift this up. Uh, but I'll lift it up. This hardened block that came back from Heat Treat, I believe it's about 4852 Rockwell. Um, typically, we would take this block back from Heat Treat and we would grind it. We would set it up in the grinder and we'd grind all the sides, square it in an angle plate, and grind it. And it would take about four or five hours to do that. Our goal here is to reduce the amount of time, this block's getting heavy on me, is to reduce the amount of time by mounting a, a fast mill system into these pockets, putting it on the five axis, and hard machining this and we've been able to do that and save a lot of time. We can get this block to size on the outside within 30 minutes versus four hours. So that's a huge advantage. Um, and we're, we're trying to utilize the system more and more as we go. With this um, mindset of fixturing, um, one of the good things that we can do as we learn more and more about it is, for instance, we're setting this fast mill system up, which is similar to FCS. Uh, but we're also putting it on this uh, five-axis vise, which is a, a curt, curt five-axis vise, which we're going to utilize a dovetail for. But this allows us to use our uh, fast mill setup in the YCM to use this centerless vise. Um, it'll also allow us to put um, an Aroa chuck on there quickly, which I'll show you in a minute. We already have a 3R setup on that setup. So it's kind of a fixture on a fixture, but it allows us to make quick changes and then do a variety of things, whether they're small inserts or a larger block like we have here. And for us, this is a larger block. Um, I know some shops do a lot bigger stuff, which is fine, but this system, as you move into the fast mill, you can do larger blocks that way and, and you can plan it for multiple machines. So the goal is to utilize these fixtures and use these machines the best you can um, to save time and money and, uh, and get less interaction at human error involved, which is a, it's a, it's a form of automation. It doesn't have to be a robot. It, it's the way I've, I was explained, um, the automation mindset is getting less error, less interaction, less mistakes. Uh, as possible and that gives you the advantage of uh, actually truly using the the tolerancing that the machines are built built to uh, which is always much better than than me trying to put a block in a vise and try to clamp it at the same time so we're gonna show a couple more features and we're gonna show you how a lot of this all gets thought out and put in the CAD first so we always have it in the CAD we see exactly how we want to do it. Um, and sometimes we make changes on the fly at that point, but it's all driven by the CAD system and where you're going to start from. As you can see here, we have our 
Fastmail setup it, or, fa or FCS uh, equivalent there. And then we have our Sunspot holder for our 3R. Um, and we have it mounted on our, our block that we're machining. This is the idea. And everything is basically started from this center point that we can share across the EDM and the 5 axis. And this gives us our starting point. And this is what we're trying to achieve on, on our mindset. Now, the disadvantage is that it's extra. Someone will, will complain, hey, this is extra work to put this pattern in of a drill and mount this, this, this setup on here. Um, but the advantages way outweigh the disadvantages. So you end up with uh, one extra setup, if you want to call it that. And then you have the ability to take it on and off accurately within a couple tenths, if not better, and then also share it across different machine platforms to achieve the part that you're looking to achieve um, with very little setup, very fast time to change it over. And um, that is the, that's the beginning mindset of, of starting to use more and more fixtures. Whether you have five axis or not, this setup works. Um, and we started without five axis and we used the three R. Now we're getting into a larger blocks which I was showing you, um, which is going to save us a ton of time grinding um, for our cavity and core blocks. This block is that hard block I was showing earlier. This is the CAD. Um, this, this purple area is the, the um, fast mill locators that we put on there. And those act as, those act as uh, retention knobs for the, the fast mill. And what I was telling you now that this comes back from heat treat we're going to grind the top and bottom so we will be grinding still but we do not have to square it with angle plates on the grinder um, at this point so we're going to turn on our, FC, our FCS fast mill plate so you can see what I'm talking about this is how it's going to be in the machine if I can turn it back on and these will be locked on and then I can flip it 90 make the make the cuts and we will end up with um, a huge time savings for these hard blocks now this is not a, a wild crazy five axis maneuver it is a very straightforward um, economical practical way to save time and money using a five axis machine uh, for this type of work Part of the reason for moving towards this fixture setup is, is, is a bunch of different reasons, but one of them is something has to be changed or tweaked. All of a sudden, it's, it's a very complicated, um, in a normal way, without fixtures, to get a change like that to come in where I've got to, hey, I've got to make a change on this hole, and now I've got to make a whole other setup and try to find out where that is. If you have it set up like this from the get-go, then it's as easy as this, just changing this out, um, had another part in here. The reference is, is still saved. Our zeros are still good. We're going to put this block in here and we're going to make a change on, a, on one of the holes. Um, that's actually going to get milled so it can't be wired or EDM'd or doesn't need to be EDM'd. So we're going to change the pocket. That's all done. That's set up. It's that fast. Is it difficult to change? It is. Um, it's very comfortable doing something the way you've done it over and over and over for years. So when you're introducing fixture setups, something different, um, it is challenging. And I would ask you guys, is it, isn't it hard to change the way you've always done something, especially if you've done it for years, if not you know, 20, 30 years? Um, it, is a, it is something change, change is always difficult at first, but then you think, my, my first mentor always told me it's common sense. If you can change your system and do it this way, you'll end up saving a lot of time money accuracy um, it helps you be more competitive and it, when you look at it at the end you say oh yeah that makes sense that it's common sense but it's not common sense until you get through that that whole learning curve but um, we are excited uh, to, to use this, this, these types of systems and take advantage of uh, what we've learned from the past and apply it moving forward We're just going to show you how using the system like this 
and we've shown this before, but just how easy it is to go from one machine to the next. If you're planning for it and you start it in the CAD that way, that helps you decide which way you're gonna uh, put your mounting um, surface and your mounting uh, reference. So we're gonna. Here's a great example of what we did with a particular job making cashew gate inserts. Um, we mounted them like this on a single pallet. It went to heat treat, it came back. We finished milled it on the five axis. Um, but we did it this way so we could reach all the holes on all the sides. And this is a great example of utilizing the fixtures like we've been talking about. Once we're done with that, it goes in the wire and we've been able to wire these all right off. And this is what it looks like when it's done and they match, they match up and that goes into our pocket of our mold. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Learn to Burn um, with Practical Machinist. Uh, we are very excited. We just got a new machine in today and behind me is a new MITS and it's a very accurate machine, very high speed, very low wear um, and we are excited to put it to the test and share it with you guys. Thanks for watching. The first thing I want to cover is where do we put the very first mounting plate redo? Redo. Redo. <laughs> That's too long of a pause. <laughs> we did it this way we did it. And I was fumbling my woods and I don't want to do that one. My woods. My woods.